EMP took three little girls, never to see their family again. Mom was taken when she was six years old and spent the next 13 years in an Indian residential school. The memory still haunt her. people about it because I wanted them to have an understanding of us. And I remember when I was a little girl in school, I would tell people about it and they thought I was lying. You know, so my entire life, there's been this thing looming over us about the legacy of residential school. wasn't alone. 150,000 children across Canada were ripped away from their families. The United Nations has called it a cultural genocide. Most people think it's ancient history. It's not. The last Indian residential school didn't close until 1996. Just going there and experiencing all that neglect and abuse, poor living conditions, poor diet, poor treatment, and it just makes me sad. The government thought that they should do this policy where they take Indian children for over a century where they take them to take the Indian out of the child. That was a policy. better chance of surviving that than you did as a child in Indian residential school. If you were a soldier in World War I, running into machine gun fire, you had a better chance of surviving that than you did as a child in Indian residential school. If you were a soldier in World War I, running into machine gun fire, you had a better chance of surviving that than you did as a child in Indian residential school. If you were a soldier in World War I, running into machine gun fire, you had a better chance of surviving that than you did as a child in Indian residential school. given a one-way bus ticket to Edmonton, dropped off on a street, totally unprepared. She had never been to a city in her life. She has no money, no skills, no education, no job, no self-esteem.
I can't imagine someone coming into my home and taking my kids. Like, I just can't imagine what's left behind. survived, but not without scars. Our older generations, I feel, still carry the wounds of the legacy of Indian Residential School. But I think those next generations are the change. Off the land, and we are 
first and he came and uh, took the three of us away by dog team. They took all our clothes and uh, they put us in a, in a tub with hot water and they put three of us in there. And we didn't know what was happening, you know, these, these women had black robes on. My thinking right away was, you know, these people are going to boil us. And you know, so we were all frightened, all crying. And they kept pushing us back into the tub at the time we tried to, you know, try to get out. It was a big dorm. We had um, uh, little white beds, uh, row by row. I would say about maybe about 55 or 60 of us in the dormitory. And my sister was one end of the dormitory, and I was at the other end. We didn't know where we were. They cut our hair, just chopped our hair off below your ear, like straight on. It's like uh, putting a bowl on your head and cutting all around. We were so controlled, like giving us, uh, you know, different kind of clothes to wear, you know, some kind of a clothing that um, felt very uncomfortable. We were taught, you know, that uh, we're savages and we were always wrong, we were sinful, and so on. And so we had a lot of guilt as well. If you didn't do something right, you know, we would be punished. There was severe punishment for uh, if you were caught, you know, speaking uh, your own language. And uh, they, could, they would wash our mouth with soap. And so it, it, it took a long time before we were, we were able to speak, even to each other. They had a strap, and at the end of the strap was uh, some kind of nails. And they would just strap at the end of our fingers, so where all your feelings are, you know, your fingers, and, and you know, we weren't allowed to cry out. We had to sleep with, you know, on the right side of the bed, on, and uh, with our hands up our, our pillow or under her head. I remember one time, you know, I had fallen asleep and uh, I woke up and the nun came and slapped me and told me to get onto my side. It was a rude awakening, you might say. We were scared from everything. We cried. Um, but there was my little sister who cried by the most. And I couldn't go to her. She wouldn't be allowed. Just 
of my heart. There's other things too, I just want to talk about, I don't want to talk about. It's very painful for me to talk about it. the girls that uh, came out before me during the prostitution and what is uh, suicides. About 85% of the girls that I went to uh, school was that came out to the streets of Edmonton died. When I first came back, uh, it was 20 or some years after that I had left here when I was so small. And there was just a handful of people that were left <laughs> that remembered me. One of my aunts told me, when you left, Narcy, we took you away from here years ago. Said, we all cried. <laughs> and she kind of showed me where my mom where my mom was uh -huh. in that corner somewhere. And my granny. All my family, my ancestors are here. And that's why I come here. I think I've been re very, very blessed in my life. Now that I'm 87, you can, you know, thank the Creator of what I have accomplished and how my life has been, but, you know, after residential school, you know, where your chances sometimes were, didn't have a hope in hell, really, mm -hmm. you know.